We're going to make sure that whenever you're drawing lines and circles, that the consistency remains across all devices in this tutorial. Before we do that, just going to correct something from the last tutorial. Android Studio likes to suggest uh, better ways of coding. So it's asking if we want to move this field declaration. And it's gone. Where has it gone? It's been placed right up at the class level. Now, we're going to be working with density pixels in this tutorial. So we're going to want to have another path. And I'm going to call it D underscore square. So I may as well create a new path. We've worked with density pixels before when converting bitmap images and providing different sizes of the same image to Android. But when you're drawing paths, you're going to have to do this manually. And I've created a method just to convert from density pixels to the local device pixels. Place it right down here at the bottom. So all this does, it takes the density pixels as an input, as an integer, and on whichever device the app is running, it gets the resources, gets the display metrics, and under the display metrics, it gets the density. If you multiply that by the density pixel you've inputted, you get the local pixel values for that device. So we return that as an integer. You could modify each of these values, the existing values, by surrounding it by that function, and that would work and it would fix it. But I want to demonstrate and show at the same time the correct versions and the incorrect versions on the same activity. So if we scroll up to the top, here we've got our pixel coordinates for the last example. And I'm just going to put some variables down for our density pixel coordinates for our circle and for our queen, our density circle and density queen. I've also calculated the coordinates in terms of density pixels. So here are the pixel values we had for the last example. And here are the density pixel values. And all I'm going to do now is just paste modified versions of the last tutorial's methods that use these density pixel coordinates. So, so we have motion D circle, motion D queen, D for density. We also have the equivalent draw commands after the coordinate density coordinates have been calculated. So density pixel drawing. So we're just drawing a circle using the density circle coordinates and we're drawing our new queen at density queen locations. I almost forgot we also have a draw density square function that will draw a square in terms of density pixel coordinates. These three methods are red because I've not pasted them in yet, and that's what I'm going to do. They are identical to the methods we used before, and I'll place them at the very end. And I'll just quickly run through them so that you can pause the video and copy them across. So here's motion density queen and we're taking in the density pixel value and we're converting it to the local pixel values and we're doing the same for all the other values. Here's the motion D for the circle. It's exactly the same and we're wrapping the coordinates with our to a local pixel method. And here is our draw density square method where we're converting the inputted values density pixels to the local pixel values of the device that's currently running and we're drawing the path density square and this time I'm using a red paintbrush and I'm just stroking the path. Let's run the app and see how that how it works. I'm going to go straight into the Nexus 5 and there we have it. We have our new path, the red path, and you can see that on the Nexus 5 it does follow four squares across, four squares down, and our queen is following this path, our new queen, and we also have a red circle following that exact same path and in the background you can see the original green path that's failed. And there is one last thing I need to mention. You may have noticed that there are speed issues with this animation and if I go back in to our animation 002 layout and I go to the loop while can draw, well what Android is doing is it's running this loop as fast as it can. And that means that if there are any interruptions, the speed of our objects is going to vary. And the way to get around that is by cleverly using sleep in this loop to make sure that there are even sleep steps. 
And once you've put well thought out sleep steps in your loop, the motion of your objects will be smoother and more predictable. And there's uh, once we've done that to our animation loop, it's one step closer to something you may already know is known as the game loop. And that's what the next sub-series is going to be about. We've uh, finished this sub-series on the pitfalls and the perils of the basics of Android animation. Thanks for watching.